Just sing with us.
good again a hundred billion times But what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind
name of Christ. Let's greet one another as we sing her together again. We are together again. you've given us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us and slowly sanctifies us. We thank you for your son, Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross so that our sins may be forgiven and that we'd have salvation. Lord God, I pray that at this time we would all draw closer to you, no matter what happens, that when we sin, we would actually draw closer to you. When we hear your word, as Pastor Brian will talk about the Father's love, Lord God, from Ephesians, we will draw closer to you. As we forgive one another, just as your Son has forgiven us, we will draw closer to you. Help us, Lord God, to be patient. Help us, Lord God, to find peace. Help us to slow down and not be rushed, but just to enjoy your presence and to understand what it is you'd have from us. I pray, Lord God, that this service will go well. I pray for the picnic, Lord God, that we will get there and return back under your protection. And I pray that our minds would be set on you and that we would have good fellowship and that we would have a closer relationship with all who are involved. I pray these things in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. And a very warm welcome to everyone today. Uh, is there anybody here for the first time visiting us? No, I don't think so. If, if you are, you can stand up, quickly give us your name. Otherwise, we have to have everything done by 2.30 because we need to go to the picnic by that time. So I'll try to get through these announcements um, quickly. Uh, the OEM leadership prays for, uh, 20 minutes every Sunday before the service. This is at 1 o'clock. Anybody who would like to join, you're welcome. The, the pre-service prayer is a good time to, um, again, just get together and pray and allow God's goodness to fall on you. We will also be... So the small group fellowship is canceled today because we're going to the picnic, so I guess that's good. And Saturday Bible study, every Saturday, 10 a.m. Uh, we hold it online. If anybody's interested, uh, you can contact me or uh, somebody else who's with the SBS, and we'll, we'll get you set up for that. And yes, uh, I think I need to talk about item number seven. So Daejeon Onary Church has decided to hold a sports competition at Jung Yil's High School in Daejeon on May 15th, Wednesday. It's a holiday, so no excuses why you can't come, and hopes the participation of many OEM members. If you do, if you are coming and you want to bring friends, that's great. Just let us know that you're coming and bringing friends. And uh, that's uh, the high school there. I understand parking is limited. There's about 150 parking spaces, which sounds a lot, but remember, this is all of Daejeon Onuri. So maybe you want to carpool. If you know somebody's coming uh, and they don't have a car, maybe you can take them there. So, uh, yes, you need to bring lunch and snacks and share those, right? So it's not going to be provided, but we're expecting people to, to bring something and then we'll also share. Water is prepared by each community, 
So you don't need to bring water, but you should bring a cup or some vessel to fill it up with. Uh, you know, water skins, cups, tumblers are all good. And there'll be separate morning and afternoon snacks for children. If you have a picnic mat, it's a good idea to bring it. Um, there will be some provided, but there may not be enough for everybody. So if you've got one, please bring it. And any garbage you produce, you are responsible for that. You cannot leave it behind. You have to take it, especially with food too, no extra food left over, right? So we will be very clean about this. And uh, the picnic, I think Pastor Brian will talk very briefly about that because he, he's got a lot to say. <laughs> right, so for the picnic, uh, I will explain very briefly since we don't have much time. So uh, it is going to happen after this service and then the place is Daejeon Si Yusonggu Nondonglo 166. That's the address. If you are driving uh, by your car, then you can come to that address. And then the participation fee uh, is 5,000 won per adult and children are free. So for the, uh, for the bank account, you can ask Mr. Song or it is already provided in a cacao. Ah, okay. Where, where is Yuni? Oh, she's not here. Ah, okay. Okay, she's already there. So, and it's also provided in a cacao, cacao chip, right? Cacao chip. And Stephanie is going to announce it too. Uh, okay, so today's passage is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. And as you guys know, it's parents, uh, it was parents day. So today Sunday is also uh, served as a parent uh, Sunday, Sunday for parents. Um, and if there is a sermon I find most challenging, I think it would be when I have to speak on a topic like <laughs> honoring parents, serve your parents or parenting in front of this life veterans. <laughs> I think for this uh, kind of times, I think I should maybe sit down there and then Steve or Mr. Song should come up and then talk about what is being parents. Because my kids are only like five years old. But thankfully, since today is the day we are going to picnic, I have a good reason to keep the sermon short. So I'm, today I plan to briefly talk about what is honoring our parents' life and how do we have to honor our parents and how does the Bible talk about this. In today's, uh, let's take a look at uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. And let me read the passage for you. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise so that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy the long life on the earth. Paul mentions that obeying parents is the first commandment, but as we all know, obeying parents is not the first commandment of the Ten Commandments. It's, what, what, it's Sixth Commandment, right? And the reason why Paul mentioned this commandment as the sixth, first commandment is, as we all know, the first five of the Ten Commandments is about loving God, and the other five is about loving our neighbor. And among the commandments about loving our neighbors, this is the first commandment. Have a good relationship with your parents first. If you have, if you have to choose one that you have to keep your, your relationship, uh, a good relationship, then that's your parents. Furthermore, in the scripture, Paul says that to obey your parents in the Lord. What does that mean? Actually, it has a two meaning. It can be interpreted as a two uh, things. And first is that it excludes all the actions that go against God's will, like being ordered to maybe uh, kill someone or maybe steal something from others. That's not allowed uh, in, the, in God's name, in Christ. So you have to discern those things. And the second is that it signifies that even if it's challenging to follow certain parents, it is possible in the Lord. It is possible in the Lord. 
When I was a child, my grandmother would always tell me, when you grow up, Brian, when you grow up, you'll be better than your dad. You'll be a better pastor, and you'll be a better, better adult. You'll be a better parent. So that's what my grandma always told me. So I think it's obvious things. It's, it's something that happens to everyone. Once they grow up, they become better than uh, their parents. But after I grew up and after I become a parent and after I uh, get married, after I have uh, two children, um, my perspective completely changed. I now think that if I could be even half as good as my father, I think I would have no other wish. But this isn't because my father's ability were flawless, but because I have come to understand and empathize with him more deeply. After becoming father myself, I gradually began to understand my father's perspective. It wasn't because I thought that, oh, the, the skills or abilities that my father has is better than anyone else. No. But I came to understand what the father is like. The first thing I realized wasn't that my father's ability were, abilities were ex uh, extraordinary, but that my father was just as fragile a human being as I am. In his situation, he chose the best path he could, and all of them were for my benefit. And after I understand this, I could say, oh, maybe if I can be a maybe half as good as my father, I think that would be enough. In his situation, he chose the best part. Best, he, made, he tried to make the best decision, and every decision was for me. I believe that when Paul said, obey your parents in the Lord, he understood this well, that our parents are just human beings. But the difference between those who are parents and those who are not is that most decisions made by parents, despite their own fragilities, are the best they can make with their own abilities and often done with their children. With this perspective, this passage takes on a new meaning for me. Even though I have read the Bible several times, Whenever I read the Bible again, I find that reading, rereading the Bible through through life's experience helps me grasp deeper, deeper insight. So before I just understood this passage, oh okay, I have to follow my parents, I have to obey my parents, whatever he tells me, I have to just follow and obey. But now. It comes to me in a different way too. I mean, even even deep. It gives me even, even deeper insight. It could also be understood as understand your parents. Understand your parents. It's also a reminder to reflect on our heavenly Father. Um, before I I read this passage, I said, okay, I just what I have to do is just simple. Just whatever my parents tell me, I just do it as he tells me. That was my, that that was how I read this uh, this passage first. But now I read it as oh, I think the obeying, the true meaning of, of obeying is not just merely following what my parents tell me to do, but it is also understanding our parents. And it is also a reminder to reflect on our Heavenly Father who loves and cares for our, us despite our shortcomings. Right? When I was young, my parents was a pastor starting a new church before we go to the Philippines as a missionary. So our family faced the financial challenges all, uh, every, um, most of the time. So he couldn't afford to buy me a toy. So what he did was he had a knack for craftsmanship. So he would often carve toys out of, to out of wood for me. So whenever he carved a toy for me, he go to mountain with me, and then he tried to find the best wood, the hardest wood. And then he carved it, even cutting his hand at time. And he would, he would meticulously sand down any sharp edges so that I wouldn't get hurt. And 
then he gave that. I believe the Creator God had a similar approach when he made this word. When he made this word, he prepared and made this every single thing very carefully. He created it thoughtfully, detail by detail, for us to enjoy. I hope you all experience and embrace that fatherly love during this today's week. As we go out and see the natures that we got created, I hope we can realize and we can understand, we can find out how much, how did the Father's love support us. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you with grateful hearts for your endless love and care. Thank you for the gift of parents, for their wisdom, and the sacrifices they made for us. Lord, we pray that you guide us to honor and respect them, recognizing their human imperfections, but also their profound efforts to lead us along the right path, Lord. Lord, grant us as parents and mentors the wisdom to raise the next generation with love and patience, reflecting your divine example of unconditional care and love, Lord. Lord, as we enjoy today's fellowship, we celebrate your create, creative spirit in the beauty of the world around us. And may we feel your presence in the warmth of community and nature. Thank you, Lord, and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's sing, give thanks all together as we give our offerings to God. humble donation find the right receivers and may the receivers come closer to you our cre the creator we pray this in jesus christ's precious name amen let's close today's service with the lord's prayer our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
may go ahead, please. Um, Steve, are we meeting at the right?